Morning, guys. Um, I'm going to keep this one pretty simple. I'm just going to give away the testimonies from some people at a homeless shelter. This is the story, but we all, right now, we're all kind of homeless, guys, because this isn't our home. If you're a Christian, this is not your home. I'm not politicizing it, but what they're doing, lies, locking down capital, pick them, Facebook, YouTube, all the media, Google, pick one. Censored, locked down, shut you up, because you don't have a voice. That's what they're trying to do, guys. What happened to the abortion issue? They're stealing people's voices. They're killing people's voices. The babies are dead. They don't have a voice. Sorry. This, this is what happened. At a homeless shelter, big city, we're preaching every Sunday night. About 6 o'clock was our dinner hour. We'd try to wrap up before then, but if we weren't done at 6 o'clock, they'd all bolt. And there'd be 10 people standing in line for prayer, and they definitely need a prayer and talking to and just want to hear their story. But they'd be gone because they had to wait in line for their food. They weren't sure. If, you know, I get it. They might, they, they were living on, their, on the, in the flesh in their belly because they didn't know if they were going to get another meal. Some of them weren't even that good, but, you know, they, they at least it was a meal. So... We're going to big church, several thousand people, I'm sure. A lot of them online, but. And I, there was over a hundred people that were like worshiping or leading worship or whatever. And I asked a bunch of them, a couple of them did show up, but it was over a period of a year. But I couldn't get anybody to show up. My wife and I were like, man, we want to start the service out with, you know, song and some worship. And <clears throat> so over one guy that I offered 50 bucks to, I heard he was going through a hard time. I'll show up. I heard he was between jobs and had a family. And so I was like, I got 50 bucks. It's not much, but, you know, it's only a couple hours. You show up with the guitar. And you got to be there. A month later, I oh, was sorry. This came up. That came up. I'm like, I don't get anybody to show up. So I, what I do what I always do, guys. I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. I know where to go. What my message is, who's your source? It should be God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. I went to him in prayer and said, God, what do I do? Jesus, what do I do? This is the message. He said, get him to testify because they feel like they've lost their voice. It was stolen. Their voice was stolen. Look at him. Man, I had a friend that's in that homeless ministry he says that the, the visibility of the homeless people just want they don't want jack with you because nobody's listening they feel like they're pretty hurt we all are right now look at the world look at america i'm an american i couldn't go to the capitol and see the rotunda or whatever it is if i wanted to why do i live in china russia a third world country why are they locking it up our voice, guys, is what they're after. Silence us. If you disagree with them, silence you. If you disagree with certain things on any of the media, cut you off. They're doing it. And guys, like I said, I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. I know what I'm talking about. They're doing it rampant on, on steroids. But I don't care. They're doing it because they got money. Guess who owns all the money? Guess who owns the cattle on a thousand hills? Our God. So this is the story. This is going to give me three short testimonies. One guy got up, and, and I had to screen him because I had people get up and, you know, I'm, I'm, I was a drunken sailor and slept with a hundred women and one guy. And the drugs. Well, some of us all did all that. That's not really a testimony. It is and it isn't. You know, you got to be careful what you testify. And to who? This was one guy's testimony. Up to, it was long. It took him ten minutes, but I let him go through it because he had the, the whole the whole crowd was crying. Everybody in the, in, sitting in the pews in the shelf from the shelter was crying, ball of tears. He was a mechanic and three kids living in a motel because he lost his job. The, um, the motel manager came down, knocked on his door. It was like six or seven at night. Sir, if you don't, I need $100 by tomorrow at noon or, you know, your stuff's on the street. You're out. I can't keep you any longer. So he left, went to his wife. He said, honey, I need this room. They had two rooms. 
to pray. And he got on his knees and prayed. And this was his testimony. And he said, God, it's not for me, but it's for my wife and children. I need a job. And I need $100. I need some help. Crying out. That's what I'm telling you. His voice. But God hears your voice. It's in Malachi 3, 16. It's a book of, of remembrance. He remembers our prayers, guys. Every single one of them. They're not going out void. God heard him. Sent an angel. And the angel said, go wherever I tell you to go. Tomorrow at 7 in the morning. Get your uniform out. And go where I tell you to go. Wear your uniform. Get a mechanic uniform. Went told his wife. And she jumped up. Ran. Got the ironing board out. Cleaned up his uniform. Got all ready. Make sure you got out the door at 7 in the morning like wives do. Some of y'all don't think they do, but they do a lot. Me too. Sometimes I take mine for advantage of mine. But that's a whole other story and maybe you know message. But the, um, he goes out and walks in the streets. In Dallas. Big city. Industrial area. 11 o'clock in, in the morning. He's tired, hot. Thirsty, hot down here, the summer. Wore out, probably didn't have any money for food, probably hadn't even eaten. He didn't say all that, but I'm sure that was part of the case. He's kind of panicking. I got less than an hour. The angel told him, appeared to him again, and said, Go down this alley. Okay, well, big city, guys. I'm in Dallas. A lot of people got guns. He's walking down the alley, and the, the businesses aren't marked. It's an alley. It's, a, you know, dumpsters and just, you know, it's an alley in a, in a big city. It's halfway down, and the angel said, go through this door. He's like, man, I don't want to get shot. You don't just walk into a business in the back door. We're in Texas. Guys, it, it, it's, I'm serious. A lot of people have guns and won't think nothing of shooting you if you walk in their business through the back door. He's a little fearful, but he checked the door and it was unlocked. So he opened it. It was a mechanic's car shop full of cars, people working on cars. He walks to the front, finds the owner. The owner says, you're a mechanic? He said, yeah, they got to talking. And he said, you want a job? Yeah, I want a job. Got to talk more, but then fear hit him. Like it's hitting most of us, a lot of us right now, with all these diseases and the government and the crazy, crazy stuff. But I'm used to it because that's been going on in the church world for a long time. The hierarchy and all the crazy stuff that they're doing. I'm not knocking church. If you got a good church, stick to it and go to it. None of them are going to be perfect. I get that. But some of them want to crush you like a grape. Crush, crush your dreams, whatever. And then our church, they need to take their sign down. But anyhow, that's a whole other message. But so he, fear hit him. He needed that $100. 11.30 by now, you know. It's, I mean, he is right down to the wire. Like many of us and many of y'all. Sorry, I'm going to drink coffee while I'm... Good cup. Fear. I need that hundred dollars. So he started pressuring the guy. Finally, the guy says, the owner says, "Hey, do you have a toolbox?" He said, "Yep." He said, "Bring it up here at four this afternoon. Set it on this counter." He reached in his pocket, pulled out a crisp hundred dollar bill. He said, "I'll give you a hundred dollars." The kid started crying. Told him the story. The owner started crying. He said, that same angel that visited you visited me last night and told me to get $100 out of the bank cash and bring it with me to work because I was going to hire a mechanic today. Don't tell me what God can do. Here's another one, a short one. A bunch of them. Get him to testify. That's, your voice has been stolen. This lady was, had been in a car wreck, and she was in a wheelchair. She had collapsed lungs. Man, she had 12 things wrong with her. Some of them major. 
N. Just stuff going on in her life, guys. She was in a wheelchair and couldn't get up. So, and she was rolling through the park. And she had to get to, she was trying to get to Philadelphia, where her son lived. And she couldn't get there. And she couldn't get there. Because she had doctors, she had, how was she going to get to the hospital? She had no insurance. She had to have operations. She was really hurt. She rolled through the park. Once again, it's hot in Dallas. You know, I mean, it's just a hot state. Texas is a hot state. She's thirsty, tired, arms wore out. Can you imagine being in a wheelchair? How do you even go to the bathroom? You know, her life was pretty hard. Or the, you know, and she said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. She kept saying that scripture over and over. Tired, hot, rolling, not knowing, stressed out, probably to the max. Scale of one to 10, probably 5,000. Barely could breathe, lung was collapsed, needed operations. You know, the system's pretty broken. It's real broken when you don't have insurance. I'm not knocking it. There's some help out there, but I'm just saying, you know, you know what I'm talking about. So, all of a sudden the breeze came and blew a bag across, a plastic bag, and landed right in front of her. So she reached down and opened it up, and inside, written on a little piece of paper, that's all that was in there, was that scripture, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Get him to testify. We got a voice, guys. I'm gonna end with something really cool, so you gotta hear the end. Last one was a lady, same thing, in a wheelchair. But hers, and it's a song, I didn't know it was a song at the time, but she sang it, and then a broken crayon can still call her. How many of y'all have had a broken crayon and you just peel the paper off and you still use it? Man, these broken, tore up lives, guys, do you know their stories? No, you don't. Told some people at a church, have you even listened to them? No, you don't. People, I get it. People want to ignore the homeless because they're, you know, they're going to steal from you. A lot of them are, yeah. A lot of them are on drugs, yeah. A lot of them got such messy, ugly lives. But right now, we all got a mess going on. It's time to testify. Look at this shirt. goes along with this post I saw. We are the storm. Look at that video of mine. It was a dream that I had, guys. About being in the storm. We are the storm. Joel's army is coming forth. This post I saw said, <clears throat> Finally, David had to pick up a stone when he came to come against Goliath time for action oh yeah they're saying domestic terrorists i'm not talking about running the streets with your with your rifle with 300 bullets you're not gonna you're not no match for the military or the police anyhow i'm not against people owning guns they should have the right to do that but so that's not what i'm saying that's not gonna fly it's gonna work it's the word of god and the testimony it's in revelations 12 and 11 and i'm gonna end with this Two years, maybe three years ago, long story, but I get random cities in prayer. I mean, real random, not even, I'm in Dallas. This one was in Pennsylvania. I had to go look it up and it was a town, some goofy name and, and it was a town that existed and we went there and it only about 4,000 people. I had, really had nothing to go on. It was a long journey, 12 days on the road. Cool testimony though, but before we went, the Lord gave me the scripture, Psalms 29, 1 through 4. The voice of the Lord is as thunder over many waters is four. Read it. He said, we are his voice. His choice to be his voice, his hands and his feet. Guys, it's time to take action. I'm not talking about picking up a gun and running the streets like a crazy person. I'm talking about picking up your weapon, which are not carnal, but spiritual, but pulling down strongholds. No one might even see it. 
It works, guys. Real well. It's the call to arms. Pick up your sword and pick up your cross and follow me. Pick up your sword, guys, which is the word of God. Don't abuse it and misuse it, but teach people. Show them the way out. Be that light to the world. Be that voice. Be that voice for the unborn. And guys, I'm sorry to say, but we're not doing good with that. The church has dropped the ball. Now, like I said, we're all homeless. And they're gutting and destroying America as we speak. The land we live in, guys, our home. But this is not our home. This is not our earthly home. It's a spiritual home. Our treasure is made up in heaven. There's a lot of stuff here, guys. But get him to testify. Use your voice. Speak up. The, the, last, the scripture that says the voice of the Lord is as thunder over many waters. He showed me something about that too. Many waters. Guess what? Guess what the internet does? Because there are many waters. I don't care what Facebook and YouTube and all those people are doing. I really don't. Of course they are. They want to politicize and censor censorship everything. If you don't agree with it, it man, why do they call it newsfeed? Man, they're jacking with us really bad guys. Who cares? I'm gonna use it till I get cut off. Booted off my from this message. Who knows? But I know who's in charge. And that was God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and his word. Love you guys. Use your voice. Don't just speak up. Pick up that rock. Do what God told you to do. And it's time to knock the snot out of this Goliath. Grab that bull by the horns and wrestle him to the ground. Running rampant through this land. That bull is demonic. Might be blood, snot, and ugly. Who cares? Take action. Jump the fence. Quit sitting on the other side of the fence. Trying to strategize and plan and do and you know play the safe game. Be his voice. You got one. But pray about it first and be the right voice, guys, in the right light. Love you guys. Talk to you soon.